Hey guys, welcome to Hacker News Nation number two. So uh, every week we cover the top stories on Hacker News, our favorites at least. Our favorites, Matan, Chris from one month. Chris and Matan. So uh, what do you got for us this week? Um, I... I only have... Okay, so we're going to try something different this time. We are going to give a few quick stories, and then we're going to do one or two longer stories that we thought needed a little more explanation. So let's do our quick ones first. Cool. So uh, good? You want to go first with your quick one? I want to start with... Uh, it's, a, it's just one word as the submitted article. Coin with uh, 1,320 points by Suki. Uh, so Coin, for those of you guys who saw, is this like plastic card. I think it's plastic. And it's meant to replace all your credit cards. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like a, a concept video, uh, a la Dropbox back in the day, in which a guy explains how they're building this plastic card. You keep it in your wallet, and you can switch it out for your business card or your debit card or whatever you want. For those of us who carry around tons of cards all the time, which I know I do. Cool. So uh, a lot of people were really into this idea. I thought it was very cool. I've seen ideas like this floating around for a while, but I'm glad that there's a company actually on it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I mean, that's cool. Um, is it secure? I mean, so I have one credit card. What if I lose that credit card? Can other people just take my credit So card? apparently security is, is actually even better on something like this, yeah. right? So have you ever left your card behind at like a bar, for example? All the time. So one of the Seriously. supposed features of this is that it's got this low frequency Bluetooth. So if it detects that your, your phone is moving away, like you left it behind, yeah. then your phone can actually vibrate to say, hey, you left your coin. So okay, the, cool. there's more potential security features. Uh, this is reasonable, but I would wonder, like, why are we making more hardware? Why not just make, I feel like, software? Let's just jump right to my app that's going to pay for things. Like, why do I need, like, more physical stuff that's going to have more points of failure? Probably, like, carrying it around or even losing that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I could still lose this thing. But, yeah. But I get it. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, my only hesitation here, uh, and I feel you on that yeah. one, too, um, my hesitation is that it's not going to be ready until summer of next year. Okay. Um, and so, like, hopefully yeah. it actually gets made. I would love to have one, but I haven't pre-ordered it, given how... That was, was what I was going to ask you. Did you order it? I did not. Because that's because everybody's like, I want this. It's so cool. But then if you don't actually, like, put money into it, it's just like... I feel like a lot idea. of people did. I am willing to wait. Uh, yeah, often right, the first guess. version of something is, like, buggy or whatever. Yeah, and enough. I don't think in this case I'm not going to be able to get my hands on it right. just because I didn't order it. So all right, take it. All right. Hopefully it gets made. Cool. All right, let's do let's do another one. Let's, we should have like a segment name. This can be like rapid fire, and like maybe we'll bring a gun and then shoot our stories or something. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Next story. <laughs> don't threaten the audience. <laughs> Is that a threat? I, I have a tendency to do that with girls too. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like think I'm cute and I'll like shoot them. <laughs> it's like it doesn't. Really Didn't your mom teach you pointing? Is she did. Not so good. I, I shoot to make sure. Okay. Next story. Uh, GitHub. So, GitHub, where you commit your code, um, developers use that to push code. Mm -hmm. um, there, someone has come up with this site, my GitHub resume, and this is cool because you can type in your GitHub name, and you can see. Check it out. You can type in my GitHub name. Uh -huh. Uh, you can see that I've committed code from Ruby, 83%, uh, CSS, 16%, and it shows some of the sites that I've worked on. So the cool thing about this is really all it's doing is taking GitHub stuff that's out there already and just putting this kind of fun wrapper around it. There's nothing too special, um, but I think it gives us kind of a nice interface to learn about some people like Paul Irish here. You know Paul Irish is? I don't. Really important in the front-end community. Paul Irish works at Google. Uh, oh, you can see it. it says it right here. Um, he's made so many things that we, you know, we use all the time, like a uh, HTML5 infinite boilerplate. Scroll. I could probably read these. Yeah, infinite scroll. Um, this is convenient. It's really cool. Modernizer. Um, so, so the idea is, so many people are using GitHub accounts as their resumes anyway. Uh, like yes. We had a job posting the other day, and. I just went straight towards someone's GitHub right. profile because yes. it's much easier to see what they've actually worked on yeah. than to look at a resume. It's a live account. But the trick is, if you're looking at GitHub, it's open source mm -hmm. commits, right? Mm -hmm. Open source code that I've pushed live. Some live. of it. You can see the which projects are yours, which ones it's are yours. But it's public own. ones. Um, I wonder if they would show uh, private repos yeah, on You'd have there. to like authenticate or something. Because uh, it's private. Uh, that's a good point. So, okay, so it's only showing your open source. So, projects. like mine. So mine, for example, it doesn't look mm -hmm. like I've done that much because most of my repos are, are 
public that or is, private or private. You that, know what I mean? That's a good point. Yeah. So, well, but so I, I guess you're val- you're uh, you're judging people based on their open source projects, which is like a fair way to uh, to evaluate someone. Some developers don't do a ton of open source work though, so that's kind of unfortunate. Okay. All right. Oh, so yeah. what have I got for you? Oh, I'm excited about this one. So uh, it was just announced that Amazon RDS uh, is RDS. RDS is a relational database system, right? right, right. It's like a database. So, so Amazon has this, uh, along with AWS or, or like their their hosting uh, their hosting service, they have this database service, mm-hmm. and and uh, it's now opening for beta for Postgres. Um, so Postgres is this other database. Postgres is an alternative to. Uh, it's it's a version of SQL. A lot of people use it. A lot of people use Postgres. Uh, more people use MySQL, right? And the reason why people use MySQL is because that was what WordPress used by default. Right, and I used that for about 10 years with WordPress. It comes with it, it's open source. Um, I believe Sun owns it, but what apps, right? I mean, it's, it's just free and open source. Mm-hmm. Anyone can use it. Mm-hmm. So it's Postgres. Uh, Postgres is uh, as well. Pretty right. Um, Postgres is like, it's, it's the latest of the SQL databases. A lot of people are switching over to Postgres. Uh, Heroku uses Postgres by default. Mm. A lot of Rails apps when they're not done in, uh, you know, like the production server you would use in a Rails app often is Postgres. And the reason why a lot of people use MySQL is because of the popularity that it was holding over from WordPress. So this gotcha. switch to Postgres is nice because a lot of people were forced to use MySQL even in the Rails apps uh, in production, because that's what Amazon and it was like a came default. with by default. It was just by default, so people would use it. Um, and Postgres exactly. has been a pain in the ass to install. Yeah, tra- for so many <laughs> traditional years, we had a hell of a time this summer trying to install it. But now there's also a, a desktop app. version app where you can go up with the link here, and, and you can see what that is. And basically, I mean, some of the nice features of Postgres, it like comes with a bunch more features, but. Uh, just actually caring about your data, yeah. making sure that weird stuff doesn't happen, like if you input stuff incorrectly. Yeah. One of the big complaints with MySQL is that if you input stuff incorrectly, it often doesn't complain at all. It'll, it like if you put in um, the, the wrong kind of date format, it sometimes yeah. will just zero it out and like you won't know that you did it wrong. Whereas Postgres will complain um, and, and so it's kind good of respond. It's good right that way. it complains, keeps you in check. Yeah, so like that's a, a, exactly. So, uh, so that's pretty exciting, and now it's easy to set up on Amazon. Um, that's pretty rad. Are those? Do you have any more quick stories? Those are quick stories. Those are quick stories. Those are quick stories. Rapid fire. I'm gonna make bang noises when that happens. All right. So, uh, all right, let's just calm down. We did it. We did that. All right. <laughs> it's quick. Yeah. It's on you. Can we cheers before my next story? Yes. Um, do you know what you're doing? No, that's why I need to take a drink. Oh man, this is amazing. So I, I got to show you this. So. <laughs> Where to begin? Uh, 37 signals. Mm-hmm. You know 37 signals. Yes. Right. Uh, Makers of uh, Basecamp and High Rise and Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails. DHH. Authors. Authors. Uh, rework. Great book. So a lot of stuff has come out of this uh, agency, I believe in Chicago, right? Yep. Um, 37 signals. And one thing that they're known for is they, this book, Rework, when they talk about how they work. And they take pride in the fact that they don't just work 24-7, mm-hmm. that they're distributed, meaning that it's not like 9 to 5, it's not, you know. Um, so that's their, their culture. Now, this thing comes out from Microsoft, right? And, and I'm going to show this to you right now. Um, this for- is so, I can't believe Microsoft did this. <laughs> I know, do you see this? 365, right? So I don't even know what three, I guess that's like their new name for Word. I'm making that up, but it looks like it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so I'm just going to read a few of these. So, so, Micro- so this is like an ad campaign. It's like an ad campaign. An infographic. Ex- exactly, right? So, so let, me, let me read a few of these. So um, Microsoft, this is, and this is real, by the way. <laughs> okay. So uh, you don't have to miss the kid's game or recital when you can work anywhere, <laughs> right? So 20% of parents said they have worked at a child's event or activity, which is probably true. Yeah. I mean, people are on their phones, they're blackberries, they're yeah. snoozleberries, and, they're, yeah. and their kids are playing, and they're not, right, okay, I get it. Let's, so they're, they're proud of this, right? All right? Yeah. Well, let me show you one more, and then I'll show you the, the opposite. So uh, here's another one. So, oh, I don't know which one to show you. Right, I'll show you this one. So, um, get work done while enjoying that happy hour appetizer. 27% of people have worked when they were out to eat. <laughs> so, you know, you're with someone, they go up to use the restroom, 
and you start, you guys are doodling on your phone, and they come back, and you I've, put it down. I've done that. We've, we've all done that, right? Yeah, yeah. I try to not have my phone out though when someone's around. Yeah. Like if they go to the bathroom, it's a great excuse to just take a little peek at sure, that yeah. text message that just you felt. Plug in, just feel, yeah. Yeah, get that. Get that feeling. Get that high. Check on the internet. Is the internet you okay? All right, yeah, I'm good. Still there. Are you still there? All right, good. All right, check. Um, so we get it, right? Uh, I wouldn't say this is anything people are proud of, but clearly Microsoft thinks it's pretty be wonderful. Proud of that. So that's their ad campaign, and this is what 37 Signals came out with this article and their counter ad campaign. So uh, 37 Signals, this take on it. You can pretend to care about your kid's game, but work instead. 100% of kids wish you had seen them score that goal. Awesome. I'll read, I can read all of these, but I'll read one more. So, oh, hey, New York City, what's up? It's wonderful to dine with friends family, and your 12 clients. 73% truly did have a happy hour with friends, not work. <laughs> okay, so these are amazing. So uh, read these if you're interested in more about 37 Signals or, or Rails. It's definitely worth um, reading Rework or a few of their other books. Yeah. Okay, next one. All right, so uh, here's one that I think is quite cool. Google wins book scanning case. Judge finds hey. fair use, cites many benefits, with uh, 471 posts by Jappagit. So the issue here, and this has been a long running story, is that Google has been trying to scan, uh, their goal has been to scan every single book on the planet Earth for the last like eight years since they announced this. Sure. Announced this. So you can Google and get read through books. You can search through books. Yes. And they've been they've been getting sued by the Authors Guild for yes. the last eight years. True story. And the Authors Guild is claiming that by doing this, Google is going to hurt uh, the you know the ability for authors to make money. Mm -hmm. It's going it's basically breaking or infringing on the copyright mm -hmm. that like the Authors Guild and, and other people have in these books. And uh, and so it's been going on for eight years. And a judge finally said Google is allowed to do this. Uh, it's fair use. And specifically in this case, they're doing something so innovative, mm -hmm. first of all. So this is not just like a, a copy, right? Like they're actually trying to, I think the judge recognized that they're trying to do something really innovative here. And mm. so he let them get away with maybe more than you otherwise would, mm. right? But also the big thing is that they're not directly going to be monetizing these books. Um, sure. They're not going to be charging for the books. Sure. I assume they'll be doing ads like next to search, yeah. which is... So yeah. in a way, they're kind of monetizing that. But also, they're not going to be putting the entire text of the book online for anyone. I think that's the yeah, key thing. That's the key thing, is, yeah. is they're only going to provide searchability. Okay. Um, however, if they have all the text, maybe it's just a matter of time before it is all available. So there. let me make sure I got it. The judge ruled, this is cool. You guys copy all the books in the world. Put them on the web. This is totally cool. Of, they, can keep doing what, they can keep doing what they're doing. Um, and that's that. I dig it. Um, I think that, that that really helps me. I knew when I was in school, I was going through and looking for articles, and even now through books. That's cool. Yeah, I, 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 I stopped pirating books, though. Yeah. <laughs> no one pirates books anymore. We don't pirate. Okay. okay. Why common interviews were this week? There was a really cool, or not, I don't want to say cool, but uh, I thought poignant, we can say, post, we got rejected by Y Combinator. Mm -hmm. So... I brought this up. I thought this is really good. This, you know, this guy is basically saying we applied. Uh, his, his hubris got the best of him. He had already written uh, to all his friends that he got in, and then <laughs> as soon as he was going to send it, he found out he didn't get in. Uh, that's pretty stupid. Yeah, that's pretty stupid. Well, but <laughs> he allegedly admits it, though. I mean, okay. Um, so but he, then like, prepared he prepared this acceptance email. He did prepare this acceptance email. Um, but then, uh, instead he wrote, instead he wrote this email about how much he had learned from it or this Facebook post. And he found out that Drew Houston from Dropbox, mm -hmm. uh, one of the richest, you know, startups in the world, Dropbox came from Y Combinator. Mm -hmm. They had been rejected initially. Um, and then a litany of other people. And I brought this up because you were rejected. It was rejected originally. the first time. And so what does this mean and, and how is this important for people maybe with startups or following startups? So just some context. Chris and I uh, were part of the Y Combinator y match Combinator. this past summer. Yes. And when I first applied two years ago, uh, I was rejected. 
Right. Um, and there were a number of reasons for that, but it was it felt pretty crushing hmm. when it happened, and uh, and that startup actually ended up dissolving, as a lot of these companies unfortunately do, which is a shame because. Uh, you know, I, I think startups are bound to get rejected all the time, right? Like if, if you applied for a thousand of these things, you'd get rejected from 999. Mm. So if you can't deal with rejection as a startup and continue and go on and still sort of fight to apply again another day, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't really bode well for the company itself. Um, so when I first applied, I the conclusion from that actually was that I was not going to be able to get anywhere unless I had... Unless I was able to overcome these obstacles that I had. I didn't have a technical co-founder, just right. had an idea. Right, you were just by yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, the first time I applied, I applied with someone, but we were both, did. We were both business focused. Um, and so that's actually what put me on the path to learning how to code, mm -hmm. to teaching myself how to code. Sure. And, uh, and when I ended up actually coming back from that experience, uh, I came back with this program of like showing people how they can actually learn how to code on their own. So uh, it, it. it comes full circle a little under two years later where I applied back with this. <laughs> Ignore the beeping. That was our 15 minute time. It means we're over time. Keep uh, going. So I actually, from that whole realization, realized that all these coding resources sucked. Yeah. Ended up creating a company around teaching people who are total beginners how to code and actually build out their applications and then ended up getting accepted into Y Combinator two years later. That's great, yeah. Which was really, really cool and uh, and I think they liked a lot because it shows that you know they see one point, they yeah. see that point A and then they see how much you can accomplish in a short amount of time. Formidable. Right? Formidable was the word of the summer. That was the word of the summer that Paul Graham uh, just you need to be formidable and, and it's a word that we don't use that often, but That's right. it means, you know, confident and, and just, you want to see that someone is going to succeed with or without your help. They are going to do it and they are determined. And it's at that point that someone will generally That's right. see you and want to help you. So for those of you who did get rejected, uh, that's okay. A lot of really, really good ideas do end up getting rejected yeah. and uh, just take it as a little bit of like, you know, you want to get revenge in a way by showing them how awesome you are <laughs> and making them regret not yeah. accepting you. And then when you do get in later, you can like, you can forgive them yeah. and everything will be cool. Or if you don't, you can take revenge some other way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> showing up their doorstep, you know, with like a goat head or some shit. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. This is a morbid one. All right. So last story. Let's go. Last go story. And I think this is a, a really good one. <laughs> this is another morbid one. So someone posted 37 signal valuation tops 100 billion after bold VC investment. Ooh. Parentheses 2009. Um, so this is another 37 signals story. And uh, so this was actually posted in response to the Snapchat story from uh, earlier oh, so this week. Snapchat got acquired by Facebook? No, Snapchat got an acquisition offer by Facebook oh, so they for got $3 billion. A... They turned it down. Gotcha. Turns out later they actually got an offer from Google for $4 billion as well. Fucking Snapchat? Well, they do I mean, 350 million Snapchat? photo shares a day. 29% of adults between the ages of like 18 and 35 yeah. use Snapchat, right? So that's Damn. gigantic. Another, another off topic, but I heard that those are just all saved on your phone and someone opened up their phone and found them on there. Ooh. The off topic. Look that up later. I would hope not. Yeah. <laughs> um, I heard Jim Cramer saying that brokers are using it for insider trading because, oh. you know, it disappears. Whether or not that's true. It's like a good conspiracy theory. Damn. So someone posted this article, which is like a, a 37 Signals article. Oh. It's a little bit of a criticism about valuations of companies that, that have not had revenue, which Snapchat is. I read this and I was a bit confused, to be honest. Well, so it, it, the way it goes is uh, they say that a VC bought 0. .0000 whatever 1% of the company right. for $1, right. which technically values them at $100 billion. And it's a joke, right? And But they also say... Uh, when it comes to validations, making money is a real obstacle. So we've decided to actually stop making money. That way people, people can speculate about our valuation. Right. And then we can be worth $100 billion. Right. And if you read it the first time, at first I was like, is this April Fool's? And you look at the date and actually it's not April Fool's. It's not. But it's also n not from this week. It's not. It's from, uh, it's from four years ago. It's from four years ago, but it was on the top of Hacker News this week. Well, so Paul, uh, Paul Bukite okay. uh, was one of the partners at Y Combinator. Founder uh, of Gmail. Inventor of Gmail. Inventor and, of Gmail. Uh, and Friendster. Um, yes. Friendfeed. Yeah. 
Fenster. Fenster is totally like MySpace. Like, yes. Delicious. Um, which was bought by Facebook, actually. He points out smartly that uh, this was actually written in response to Facebook four years ago getting valued at $6.5 right. billion, dollars, which everyone at the time thought was ridiculous because they had like no revenue or profit. Right. Right. And, uh, and he says, you know, this doesn't really hold weight given that Facebook is now worth over $100 billion and they're making money and, you know, they've justified this valuation. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the, the argument here is that Snapchat is worth three or four billion dollars because people really do think that they have the potential to make it big yeah. and they have the potential to be one of these like exceptional cases like Facebook or, yeah. or like LinkedIn yeah. that does end up making a huge amount of money. Uh, but I think a lot of people maybe on Hacker News and in general are a little bit, you know, like critical of this valuation that Snapchat had and maybe concerned, you know, that, that we're in a bit of a bubble period like that startups are now being valued on just eyeballs and to mm. instead of actual real potential to make money. So the joke, the joke is that someone probably didn't really give them this probably is a joke. Right? This is absolutely, this is true. No, this is a joke. Okay. It's, it's, so someone, I mean, it could have been like, you know, offhand, like anyway, but yeah. so, so someone gives them a dollar and they're saying you own zero, 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 one percent of my company. Yeah. And then they just used that, they multiplied it times whatever it was, and they, they said, oh, we are a billion, is it a billion dollar company or something like that? Yeah, yeah, there's a great formula that they mentioned here, which is, I, you know, uh, uh, yeah. instead of calculating My eyes company don't really that. based on revenue, we've got this oh, new Twitter formula, follows. which is Twitter followers times Facebook fans plus the number of employees right. times a thousand times RSS subscribers plus daily page views. Right, right, right. right this right. ridiculous thing. Um, <laughs> And, and again, uh, this is a harder article to understand because they write, I mean, rework, they were at least, like you mentioned before, and um, their blog, there's so much serious, like almost journalism coming out of 37 Signals these days. And then this, and then I was just like, is this a joke? I don't know. What, so, they, so, so take it with a, take the parody with a grain of salt though, because yes. he, this was about Facebook and it was wrong. Very funny. It's still a, a worthwhile point. So that's this week's Hacker News Nation. So what did we learn today? Uh, we learned that I really want technology in my wallet. Mm -hmm. We learned that scanning books is cool. Uh, we learned that Snapchat may or may not be worth three or four billion dollars. May or may not. We learned the F word. We learned the F word today. Formidable. Formidable. That's what you're thinking about, right? <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Amazon's on Postgres. Uh, we learned that the Google Timer makes a big yeah. shrill sound when it goes the off. Google Timer makes a lot of noise. And it doesn't warn us that it's going to blow our cover. All right. Beep, 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 beep. I think it's timer right now. Thank so. you guys very much for being with us. Until we'll next, week. next week. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea to threaten the audience. No? Right. No. It's like, it's like hostile. <laughs> Just a good thing it's Steve Carell. Think about this. What is the most exciting thing that can happen on TV or in movies or in real life? Somebody has a gun.